Hi everyone, first of all BMS, thank you so much for having me here today. Also acknowledging my other speakers that are here today, you guys are wonderful. Hi everyone, I'm Disha Madan. Some of you here will know me as a dancer. Some of you here would recognize me as an actor, but a majority of you here will know me as a social media personality. But what a lot of you here do not know is that I'm also a graphic designer, I'm a choreographer, I've done set designing, and I'm also currently a director at my dad's company called M Sciences. Today's topic is explore, and obviously, I feel like I'm probably the best example to stand up on stage and talk about it. If I were to give you a pen and a paper today and ask you what are your top reasons for not exploring in your careers, what would, what would they be? I have been someone in your shoes before and I have had my own fair share of reasons. So I'm going to share them with you today and I hope these are your top reasons as well. Finding your passion. At the age of three, without much of a choice, I was put into a dance school. I knew my Bharatanatyam Aduhus before I knew my ABCs. I took my first ever examination in school when I was about six years old for standard. But my first performance in front of 500 people, a live performance, was when I was three and a half years old. I scored better in my junior and senior exams in Bharatanatyam than I did in my 10th grade. So naturally, I love to dance. But it was quite a natural process to be pulled into the race of becoming an engineer or a doctor. So I took up PCMB in my first and second PUC. The turning point in my life, however, was when I failed my second PUC exams. I thought my life ended. I was devastated. Where do you go from there? Right. That's when my mom suggested that I think different, I steer different, in a different way. I don't mean you can take education lightly here when I say that I failed my exam. In fact, I'm able to sustain in the industry that I am today only because of the education that I've received. But my circumstances were really different back then. I'd lost my brother in a tragic accident and I was really not in the mental state to take up an exam. So I failed my physics exam. I took my supplementary exam and did clear it. So that was done. But that's when I knew that becoming an engineer or a doctor was not my true calling, was not what I was meant to be. That's when I thought, okay, <laughs> I'm scared to try fine arts. Back then, there were not a lot of performing arts colleges or courses like you do have now. I wish I had the choices that you have now. But I didn't back then, so I thought, okay, let's let's give fine art a choice. Let's see how it goes. And I went to Chitrakala Parishad. That's where I did graphic designing. I thought it would add to the artist in me, and it would be a great course for me. I was doing flyers. I was doing posters for my own performances. It did. It helped a great lot. But even then, after college or after school, I always went back to dancing. I was dancing from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. every single day. And I think it's pretty clear here that my passion was dancing. I knew that the joy that I found in dancing, I found in doing nothing other. The next reason of why you would probably fear exploring your careers would be the time, effort, and dedication it would require. As much as I was into PCMB and then Chitrakala Parishad, obviously I was doing a lot of, I had to do education, right? I couldn't just quit and go about and become a dancer because I was passionate about it. I was in my ninth grade when I told my mom, I want to learn a new style of dancing. Have you guys heard of So You Think You Can Dance? That was playing on TV back then. And I saw this person move like water. And I was like, oh my god, I want to learn that. Checked around, it was called contemporary. The style was called contemporary. I checked around some more, there were no classes for contemporary in Bangalore. Very, very, very few. I had to squeeze that into my schedule. I said, no, I'm going to learn it no matter what. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, 
I kept Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. I kept doing Bharatanatyam, but Tuesdays, Thursdays, and that Saturdays, I squeezed in to learn contemporary. While I was doing this, I thought I should explore some more. I went ahead and learned Kalari, and that was not enough for me. So I went ahead and learned Kuchipudi. At the age of 15, 16, 17, I was conditioning my body to learn four different dance styles. From a stiff Bharatanatyam, I went into like very nice, flowy contemporary, and then again to Kalari, and then I go to Kuchipudi. It was, it was really hard to condition my body to suit these styles, but the time, effort, and dedication needed for it, I was ready to give it in because I was so passionate about it. And trust me, when you give your time and effort and dedication into something so much, you truly will excel at it. When you have an interest to learn so much, you will excel at it. The next point that I'm coming to is a big one, the fear of failure. So now I've learned all these styles. What is next for me? I wanted to show the world how much I could do, how much I could dance, how well I was uh, trained, and how well I was at all these styles. So I heard of Dance India Dance auditions on my TV one day. And I just jumped up, I told my mom, this is what I want to do, I want to go, I want to see how good I'll be. She said, okay, go, go ahead. You know, I encourage this, go for it. So I packed my bag, wore my track pants, carried a USB with me for my tracks. I ran, they gave me a sticker with a number on it, pasted it on my shirt, all set. I stood in line and I was so scared. I cannot begin to tell you how scared I was. Every five minutes I ran to the restroom. Not because I wanted to pee, just because I wanted to close my eyes and tell myself, it's gonna be okay, don't worry. You just have to dance and come out, that's it. Fine, I got called, I went inside, I knew the person who was taking the audition. I was a big fan of hers as well. She was a dancer from the previous seasons. Now you know how well I was trained in Bharatanatyam, so you'd obviously think I'd do Bharatanatyam, but no. I was brave, I had the courage to do contemporary. Okay, I wanted to be different. I did contemporary. 30 seconds into my performance, the music stops. What happens again? <laughs> I was so scared again. I didn't know what was wrong. Did my pants tear? Did the music stop on its own? Did something happen and I didn't do something right? And that's when she read my form and she's like, you know what, it says here that you also do um, Bharatanatyam. If you don't mind, can I see some classical dancing? I said, sure. I played Krishnani Vega Nevaro on my phone. Some impromptu dancing, 45 seconds, stopped the music. And she said, you're through. I'll see you in Bombay, you're fantastic. Really? It was that simple? I could not believe that. If I was, whenever, when I was standing in that line, running to the restroom every five minutes, if I let the fear of failure get to me, I honestly would not know what my true potential would have been. I wouldn't know that I could have gone to Bombay. I wouldn't know that I could have become an actual dancer there in Bombay as a part of DID season four. I was in the top 40, the only Bangalorean there. That's, that's a fantastic feeling. Feels great, right? Honestly, the fear, of, the fear of failure is such a big thing for all of us at any stage in life. I did not get through after the top 40, but that didn't pull me down because I made it that far. It's a perspective that you see. I came back here to Bangalore. I got selected for Takadimita Dancing Stars. Have you all heard of Jalakti Klaja? It's the same format, but in Canada. So I was the dancer, I was, given, uh, I was given a hero, a star, a celebrity, and I was the choreographer for him. A few weeks went by, I was a semi-finalist. A few more weeks went by, I was the finalist. I was in the top two, I was standing there on stage, they announced the winner, and I went blank, it was me. I won the show. I won Dancing Star season one. Honestly, again, if I let fear of failure get to me, would I have ever been here today? No, I don't think I would have. You honestly need to take that courage, go an extra step, and be able to face your fears so you know 
what your true potential is. The next point for me is the fear of a steady income. I think we all, we all face this in some point of our lives, right? How do we make money out of something that we love, right? So my first ever steady income as such was when I became an actor. You'd think dancer to actor, natural pro process, you know, easy transition, but no. As a dancer, we gotta express a lot more than actors do. Like now, in a room full of you, if I were to expect someone right in the back seat to know what I'm feeling, I really need to express it when I dance. But when I'm acting, I can't over-exaggerate my emotions because the camera is right here. If I do so much, I look a little funny. So I had to relearn the entire process of expressing in order to become an actor. You all know my fear <laughs> of failure, but I had the courage to explore. I said, let's do it, let's learn it. And I went ahead, learned the entire form of acting from scratch, and I did a TV show for about 18 months to almost two years. I had a steady income, almost about 40,000 a month. I was doing well for myself. I used that money for more dance classes, for friends, trips with friends. I had fun, I had a good income, but I honestly lost that fire in me to be an actor. And life got pretty monotonous, so I thought, okay, let's quit, let's find something new. I did leave the job. I had no money for six months. I had nothing. I was just living off of my savings and I was just trying to explore new ways of my how, how else can I be creative. That's when I accidentally found the app Musical.ly. Have you all heard? I'm sure you have. It's a 15 second short form video app where you make fun videos and post it. And this was really viral in the USA, not in India. I thought, okay, let's try. Tried the app. Some of my videos got viral. Would you like to see one or two? <laughs> okay. So those were the videos that I was making that went so viral. I honestly had no idea that this could actually be a profession. But I thought, hey, let's try. That's when I became the first ever Indian to hit a million followers on that platform. That was, wow. I <laughs> Thank you. But I honestly never thought I could get there with the competition that is there right now. It's insane that I was able to do that. That's when the app picked up on that and they said, you know what, let's monetize your content. Why don't we sign a contract with you and we'll pay you for these videos. Did I hear that right? I'm getting money to make these videos at the comfort of my home? Wow, let's do it. I got 60,000 rupees every single month to work hard and put out these videos. They might look like it's fun, but I used to make five videos every single day, change a bunch of outfits, and made sure that I was tapping the audience the right way so my viral videos could actually be viral. The same year, I landed a brand deal for 8,000 rupees. The same year, I landed a brand deal for 30,000 rupees. I'm here today charging six figures for a single brand deal. A story that just expires in 24 hours, I still start, I still charge six figures. It's really gotten me to where I am today because, because I had the courage to explore. I feel like a lot of us hold it back and don't really go out there and explore because of a lot of fears that we face. And I'm a living example for y'all to see that you can come over those fears, you can overcome them and be something and make something out of it. So I have 700,000 plus followers today. I'm 30 years old. I cater to an audience of 18 to 25 year olds. They don't just follow me because I make these videos, because I'm fun to watch. 
They follow me because I've had the courage to explore an industry that wasn't really an industry before. A profession that wasn't really a profession before. And now, I still have brands laugh at me as, you know, till they know how much I make. <laughs> I still have people laugh at me as like, are you serious? That's actually a profession. But it is. And I'm so proud that I had the courage to explore. And today, I hope I don't know if I've inspired you all, but I really want you to just step out of your comfort zone. Go out there because you will only know your true potential when you do take that one single step out of your comfort zone and push yourself to it. Thank you so much for having me.